All right, hello everyone. It is um, it is Tuesday, June twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. The time is nineteen oh one New York local time. We're one hour from the Tokyo Open. I'm on my Top Step Trader account, uh, and I wanted to make a live trading uh, review. This is um, yeah. So this is going to be a live a live trade. You're going to watch it happen. Um, we are one hour to the Tokyo Open, so price is going to be moving very slowly. Um, you know, I don't know how long I want to let this recording go because this trade could end up taking a long time. But I wanted to, you know, bring you some. I wanted to bring you some information as to why I took the long here, uh, where I would place the stop loss, and what I'd be looking for in terms of a target. So. Why did I get long? Why did I get long on the Nasdaq? So number one, we start with our. We always start with the dollar index. See what the dollar index is doing. Dollar index is in a consolidation, slightly higher after resettlement. Okay, so not a lot of information gleaned from the dollar index. Next thing I look for, I'm going to go to my stock indices, go through all my products, see what has had the most most movement after resettlement. That's going to be the Nasdaq. Nasdaq has had 56 points down after our daily resettlement. So I'm. It's had the most movement. Whether I'm trying to long it or short it, uh, I, I want, I'm going to stick to the NASDAQ here. I was also thinking about silver. Um, okay, so that is why I picked the NASDAQ. Next thing in terms of refining, refining your trading is looking for entries. So we're always trying to enter in on an inefficiency. Got, we have a 10 minute chart here. We've got a BISI, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. And that is basically where the market has been sell side inefficient. We've also got an order block that we're sitting in. Um, I always want to try and enter in on an inefficiency. Now, this thing could end up coming down lower and I wanna tell you about where you wanna put your stop loss. So let's go down into our five minute time frame and I will tell you that the stop loss, you don't ever want to put your stop loss in an inefficiency, ever. Okay, you might want to put it in liquidity, meaning above a swing high or a swing low, but you don't ever want to put it in an inefficiency. So if you're, you're really trying to hone in your jet fuel on, and, and really trying to trade well, never put your stop loss in an inefficiency because price is always drawn to those at all times. Price could just curl up, go tag an inefficiency and turn around. So you never want to put your stop loss in an inefficiency. You want to put your stop loss somewhere where more likely than not it's it's a balancing act. You know, if I put it if you put it all the way down too low, that's a 20 point loss. I don't really want that at this time of the day. Uh, if I put it right here at 15,040 spot 50, that that price has been inefficient before. So price, you know, if this if the Nasdaq continues to trade lower, it it might trade down to to that right there, turn around. So I don't want to put it in an inefficiency. I'm basically going to put it where it's, you know, it's reasonable. So we have our little short-term low here. I don't want to put it directly below that because price could, you know, make a make a new one point low and then trade higher. So put it right right uh right below the 50% of this wick. I'm going to put it right there. Okay? That's refining our trade. So this is a wick inefficiency. Price could trade to it and then bounce. So back to our 10-minute chart. Now, after the first step comes and you got to pick which market you're going to trade. So that's the relative strength analysis. Could just be the market that's moved the most. Could be your bearish leader, bullish leader. Um, so you have to use your relative strength analysis to find the market that you are going to you are going to currently trade. You factor in all your factors like what time of the day it is. For example, right now we are just after resettlement, one hour, one hour after the daily resettlement, coming up on Tokyo Open. I know this thing's not going to move very much. So that way I can put on two NASDAQ contracts and feel pretty confident this time of the day this thing shouldn't be moving too terribly much. Um, okay, so that's why we picked the NASDAQ. Talked about refining our entry. Now let's talk about, okay, well, where do we put an exit? Well, 
We know that we're buy side inefficient up to 15,080 spot 25. So that's a pretty decent target. We are going to have a little bit of liquidity above this high at 69 EVAs. So that's uh, that would be a 14 point trade and that's not bad at all. We also have, we're going to have a little bit of short term liquidity above this short term high up at 92 three quarters. The time of the day is not exactly right for the NASDAQ to pop off and, and start breaking structures. So that being said, factoring in our time of the day, um, one contract's going to come off here if we can get there. One contract's going to come off just above that short term high right there, 10 minute high. And one contract's going to come off if we can make it up through our buy side inefficiency here. So I took you through all the mechanics. Now, as you know, these fair value gaps, all of our inefficiencies can invert. So we could be looking at a scenario in which the NASDAQ trades up right about there and then turns lower. So I'm watching for that. Kind of what I'm betting on here is that this order block is going to be the algorithmic signature I'm looking for that we essentially just traded slightly below this fair value gap. You know, get, get one tiny 10 minute close below it, maybe another tiny 10 minute close below it. And we just kind of find immediate support. So two different ways to trade. You can invert the inefficiencies or you can take them as immediate support or resistance. Oftentimes, I like to see these things paired with an order block like this. So order block is going to be uh, where my Fibonacci tool is. And I, if you have a tough time seeing that, maybe I'll make that purple. Okay. I then refined my entry. I didn't get a perfect entry. Okay. I missed miss the perfect entry. Optimal entry was right down here in this weekend efficiency really. Um, uh, 55 quarters I picked that because you can see there was a separation between this green candle and this black candle. That would be uh, inefficient. So don't really want to see price come down very much. If it does, uh, we take a small loss. That's why we're only trading, you know, I've pretty much made up the, my mind that I'm only going to trade one product at a time. So I'm willing to put on more contracts uh, on a single trade because I'm babying the trade. I'm watching this chart, watching it develop. You notice that uh, I'm switching between time frames, watching to see what it's doing on five minute, what it's doing on three minute, it's doing on one minute. One minute, we have a little one minute busy here. I'd like to see that form immediate support. If it doesn't, that's not a good sign. Okay, I want to see this form immediate support. Right about here. Just want to see this thing sort of pop up. If it doesn't, the trade's not looking good. And I'm not just interested in showing you winning trades. You know, I've shown you where a decent stop loss idea would be. You don't want to put your stop loss in an inefficiency. You always want to try and avoid that. You want to enter in on an inefficiency because you know that price is very drawn to inefficiency. Therefore, you don't want to put your stop there. Stops at liquidity are okay. Like if you're trying to put a stop above a swing high, that's liquidity. Price is drawn to liquidity, not as much as it is in efficiency. So it's okay. It's okay to put your stop on, on liquidity. It's not optimal. I think optimal stops are in an area of efficient price trading where you think that your idea would, would be proven wrong. Okay, we're coming down lower. Looks like, uh, let's see, five minute chart. Want to see this thing, kind of one minute chart. Could make a new low and then come up. We're still working in this busy here. Coming down to this little one minute, this ten, four minute order block right here. So you can see this black candle right here. I want to see if we can find support on this black candle, the body of that candle. The busy really was right here, but we are buy side inefficient down to the this order block, this black candle. So you can see that price did try to immediately find support off, off this candle's high. That would be the busy. Order block is lower. 
And this is how you micromanage a trade. So we are coming down, probably going to form a new short term low. And rather than our big, we're going to switch this fib. And I want to see it just in relation to this black candle here, this one candle order block. So there's our one minute, our t four minute order block right there, black candle. I want to see how price, if it comes down in to this, to this uh, black candle, how it is treating that. So coming down into the 25% retracement of this black candle's body. Coming down to the 50%, I want to see immediate support. If I don't, I don't like what I'm seeing. Okay, got a little bit of a reaction off that 50%. See if we trade through. I'm really uh, interested in the candle closes more than I am the wicks. So I'd like to see this three minute maybe respect it. Let's see if we get just get down straight down to one minute. See if the one minute we can get a close above the 50 percent. Okay, we did get one close above the 50 percent on the one minute. Let's see if we can get two closes. Looking like it uh, doesn't want to cooperate. The idea is not invalid just yet because we haven't had a five minute close. We could still get like a four minute, three minute close that starting to respect this order block. We now have an inefficiency higher, breakaway inefficiency right there. Price might want to curl right back to basically my entry. And as we make a large black candle down into this order block, I'm watching the close of this candle very intently three-minute candle watching it very intently so we are in our bullish order block here idea is still not invalid because we are wick and efficient here any point this thing could uh, reject and turn back higher. Trading down into our order block now. Trading down into the wick inefficiencies of this black and green candle. And we're stopped out at 0.4575. Okay. So at this point that was an inverted fair value gap. So this has been our bearish leader, so that is pretty much to be expected. Um, I thought we might get some immediate support. So we take a loss there. Continuing to watch the NASDAQ, now that we, we have inverted this fair value gap, we're probably shooting for this sell side liquidity right there. Be my best guess. Let's go down to a two minute chart, one minute chart. And I'd be interested in getting short now. Would want to get short on a on an inefficiency. So we're immediately sell side inefficient right there. Want to see how price reacts to that. See if we can uh, get a retracement to go short. If we don't get any retracement into this inefficiency, we're also inefficient up here. 051 three quarters, inefficient up to 049 quarters. Want to see uh, if we trade. Okay, that was a $300 loss. So now I'd be interested in shorting the NASDAQ down to 035 three quarters. That would be sell side liquidity. 
or to the midpoint of that wick right there. And that would be 042 evens. So just because I take a loss doesn't mean I'm giving up on the NASDAQ. But I am now going to be buy a short that fair value gap inverted. So you can see in the 10 minute this BISI price traded, tried to find support, traded through it, uh, inverted, started to shoot lower. So now waiting to see here on one minute chart how far it would want to retrace. Okay, so now that price uh, is retracing back up into this buy side inefficiency. I'm not just going to immediately short it. I want to see we've got we're buy side inefficient all throughout. So this is going to take a long time. This is, you know, this video record time is going to go on quite a while. Okay, um, still shooting lower. So you can see that's why I put my stop loss where I did. It's a decent place to find uh, stop loss. Now I'm interested. We are wick inefficient. 042 evens. Okay, 042 evens. Want to see how we handle this wick inefficiency? I look at that price is respecting it. Bang! Yeah, there is there is respect on that wick inefficiency. 042 evens. Okay. Coming up in this buy side inefficiency. So now we're working in between two inefficiencies. Wick inefficiency at 042 evens and buy side inefficiency at 049 quarters. So I want to see uh, I want to see how we handle if we come up to this buy side inefficiency 051 uh, 3 quarters and see if price appears to be respecting it. Then it might get short there. I'm just going to delete, delete this Fibonacci. You can see I don't use a whole lot of drawings, just some boxes and lines. So you're wondering what this yellow line is. Line is it's the CE of a wick. OK, 
Okay, it's a Wix CE right there. Let's come to our four minute chart. Could be in a long again if um, see some things. And we're a little wick inefficient at 043.50. You can see that the immediate reaction there off 042 evens. If you ever wondered whether algorithmic theory uh, is real, whether this market is actually automated, you will see examples of it doing this all the time. All the time. That's not a supply and demand zone. That's not a. Um, it's not GAN. It's not whatever you think it is. It's an algorithm. It comes down to fill. It comes down to redeliver a weak inefficiency on a one-minute chart. Seen immediate reaction. And that can't be random. There's no way out of the thousands of points that are available. It's just not. It can't be random. It's way beyond randomness. I pointed you to that wick inefficiency, 50% of this wick. Price came down to it immediately, reacted exactly there, not one takeoff. The only way that that, you know, the only way that that can be, it's way beyond randomness, is, is what I'm trying to say. 50% here would be 043 spot 50, and I'd like to see potentially for a for a long idea, another long idea. Let's go to our three minute chart. 50% of the wick that we just made come in about 043.75. Okay, let's see if we get a reaction here. Let's see if we punch through to a new low or if we get in a reaction off 50% of this wick. Do we get a little bit of a, of a reaction? See if uh, see where we close. One minute chart. 043 evens. So 043.25 was the CE of this wick right here. I don't expect that at this time of the day we would be breaking lows breaking into liquidity. Of course it is possible, I'm just saying I wouldn't expect it. This wouldn't be the time of the day that I would expect that. NASDAQ is still our bearish leader. I would be taking a counter counter lead trade. Well, we're getting a little bit of a reaction here, potentially enough to initiate a trade. I'm going to give it another minute. Okay, I'm going to take this long. We are going to put our stop loss just below the CE of this wick. Let's go right there. So we are long now. We're long two contracts. As price came down to this CE of this wick, I saw the reaction that I wanted to see. And so now we have liquidity built up to the buy side.
Okay, I'll put the order right there. So, buy side liquidity would be right there. That is what I'd be looking at to draw your attention. Balance of price range, one minute chart here. I'm not going to put my stop up break even just yet because we could get another trade back lower into this balanced price range. It could come basically put me break even and then move higher. But this is the one minute liquidity target right up here above these highs. There is going to be liquidity now up at uh, up where my where my sell limit is. We're 30 minutes to the Tokyo Open. I am watching the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has been our bearish leader after resettlement. Let's take a look at the dollar index. I'd like to see the dollar index ideally turning lower. Um, sitting in a consolidation like this is also fine. I just don't want to see the dollar index really pumping. Okay. All right, let's watch the eyeball. This is going to take time, folks. This could take another 30 minutes. You wanted to watch ICT trading live. That's not sped up. Here it is. Here's our BISI on the 10 minute chart. BISI, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. Buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. Right there. Okay, strong chance the price wants to come back about where my trade is uh, and then move higher. So this is a balanced price range on a one minute chart balance price range right here. So price is going to be drawn back basically to my trade break even. Could even trade uh, down. I'm not going to move the sell stop um, just yet. So trading algorithms are always looking for inefficiency and liquidity. So oftentimes after they hit an inefficiency target like they did with this Wix CE, it's liquidity time. I'm saying trading algorithms all the time is getting kind of wind, long-winded. I might just say the algorithm. The algorithm is going to want, after finding a redelivering, uh, redelivering an inefficiency, oftentimes it is going to go search for liquidity. Our liquidity now would be higher. Obviously, if we take a loss, that's fine. I'm not going to move the stop. Because, again, I think we could come down, trade down, basically break even, even lower, take go back into drawdown, and then move higher. So one thing that this thing could do right here is this. We are 30 minutes from the Tokyo Open. So all of your ICT factors are going to, your ICT toolbox is going to come into your brain whenever you're in a trade. So one of the things that you are looking for is the time of the day. We know that this is after, it's between sessions right now. So don't expect this to move very quickly. We're expecting this to be a long video. Uh, 10 minute chart. Let's go up to 10 minute. And then nice little thickness there. Ten minute chart. Got a big eye. See that we are buy side inefficient up here. 
15,069 evens, three quarters, up to 08050, down to 68 three quarters. We are buy side inefficient up there, so I'm looking at a liquidity target price. Uh, the algorithm might also be interested in these buy side inefficiencies. Okay, we are doing as I expected, and we are coming back into this little one-minute balance price range. I'm expecting there to be support found and then trade higher. All right, I'm going to step away from the computer. Just let the recording run for a moment. Be back. If y'all wanted to see live trading, uh, this is what it looks like. So the market is automated at all times, which is why it can be mastered. That is my opinion. If you're not there yet, you don't want to believe it. 
Uh, it's okay. We don't have to believe that yet. Just watch. Where's my eye? Where'd my eye go? No eye? The eyeball's gonna be right there. It's above this little high here. That is where the liquidity is located. Okay, the stop's now going to move in profit. Coming back into our prior BISI, short-term liquidity is going to be here. So you can see that we have a little bit of reaction as we come into, all right, now we're going to take out short-term liquidity here. We could see a turn lower here and then proceed higher. They're coming into short-term liquidity. You can see that as the CME's matching algorithms will match these aggressing buy orders with the resting sell orders that the lead market makers will have right here. Okay, so the, the market makers would have sell orders right there in order to match the aggressing orders that we just saw. Just came up to the 10 minute BISI, 10 minute buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. Okay. So, your market makers are already out, basically. They just provide resting liquidity. That is how they make their living. So you're aggressing buy orders. The lead market makers are sitting there always. You don't need book map to know where the liquidity is. It's always at the same spot. Okay, um, yeah, your market makers are already out. They don't like to carry a lot of inventory. As far as I'm aware, I haven't worked for one. Then again, I don't really even believe in market makers. I just believe that the market is driven by a computerized algorithm. So, Okay, we could see a little bit of a retracement at this point. Either way, stop is in profit now, and I'm happy with this. First liquidity target. I'm going to take off. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I'm not taking off just yet. There's really no reason to believe that this thing should come back down right this second. We just hit a liquidity pool. There's still resting liquidity higher. And we're also buy side inefficient higher than that. So even if we get a retracement here, it should be drawn higher. Uh, I'm using the I because Michael uses the I. Okay. Any move down here should be all back up. Not that I believe in orders. I believe it's just a computerized algorithm. She's just an algorithm, in my opinion. So I think the trading algorithms are going to come down to our busy here order little one minute order block here trade higher maybe come down to this volume imbalance trade higher so it's always seeking inefficiency and liquidity every single move all day long it's all it does
So, as you can see, I'm not perfect at this yet. 15 minutes of Tokyo open. I was originally trying to get long up here. Obviously, that was our one push into liquidity, second push into liquidity. So we were pushing down, creating um, liquidity. Um, many of you might be wondering, oh, there was my second eye. There's an eye. Okay, there's an eye. So if you have watched ICT's uh, or Michael Huddleston's Inner Circle Traders videos on dealing ranges, <clears throat> and you want to find the current dealing range that you're working in, here it would be. Okay? Right there. One minute chart. Like every other concept, it's all scalable. So I'm just using this as my dealing range and we're currently trading in a discount relative to from this high to this low. So price should go and seek premium. Premium and discount is not my number one preferred model. I prefer just to find the inefficiencies and the liquidity without even thinking about the premium discount aspect. Okay. Might come down to this volume imbalance here and then turn higher. We'll leave that this should turn back up. We are 15 minutes from Tokyo open, 14 minutes, uh, 20 seconds. So prior to any open, whether it's Tokyo, London, New York, should be a pickup in volatility. I'm going to buy back one. I did not mean to buy another one. Damn it. I meant to sell. I'm sorry. I'm very used to shorting. I'm usually shorting things. Okay. Well, I didn't plan on having three contracts on, but here we are. This is a bigger trade than I wanted it to be now. So, that was a mistake. That was a clicking mistake. Hour long three. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to sell one. I forgot that we're long. I'm usually thinking short. For whatever reason. Five minute chart, forming a balanced price range here. Trading back up into our fire. Five minute BISI. You can see that it's trying to invert that again, which is why we found resistance. Second time back up to the BISI. Our liquidity should be higher. Really don't see any reason why I should change my analysis. Found a little bit of one minute support on this one minute order block. Let's go up to a 15 minute chart. Yeah, 15 minute chart's looking good. Trade exactly to the 50% of this wick inefficiency. Come back up to our a 10 minute BISI here. You can see it was also a 15 minute BISI. Buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. A BISI shows you where the market has been sell side inefficient. A buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency such as this is identified from candle one, the high of candle one to the low of candle three. If there is only a candle body there, that means that it was sell side inefficient. 
You might also just hear me refer to a BISI as a sell-side inefficiency or just sell-side inefficient. And these inefficiencies are on all time frames, including below the one minute into the into the second chart. Looking at our grand scheme of things, our liquidity draw, probably for tomorrow, maybe for London tonight, would be up at 155. Would not expect that in Asian session. There's our I. We are 10 minutes to Tokyo open. Did form a displacement lower. Did not we got one tiny close below this low that took us to the high. Did we? Let's see, the low here was 054, spot 25, 054 quarters. The close here was 054 evens. That is basically the spread. So we did not close below, failed to close below. I'm going to call the one tick uh, the spread. <clears throat> so factoring in the two tick spread um, we did not did not close below the low that took us to this little one minute high uh, which would be a good sign for higher prices you're probably wondering whether to be really good at day trading if you really have to start factoring in two tick spreads answer is yes factors into your entries, it factors into your analysis. So this low here, 054 quarters, was the low that took us to the high of 059 halves. If we close below that low right there, that would be a little one minute break of structure, or market structure shift. Our close here was 054 evens. Okay, that's going to be at the top left of your screen. Top left. Top left of your screen. Now, let's see the data box. You can't see it on the data box. Um, because you see at the top left of your screen that this close was 054 evens, that does not cover a two or three tick spread. Okay, this instrument here, NASDAQ September contract, is oscillating between a one tick, two tick, and three tick spread. So factoring in the spread, this low here did not close below the low that took us to the high. And that should inform your analysis that confirms we should be going higher. So at this point, stop is going to come here. Yes, I mean, I don't know how else to tell you. Day trading is a very precise endeavor. A very precise endeavor. Okay, we are eight minutes to the Tokyo Open. There was a good candle right there. Like to see us actually get to our liquidity target. See immediate. Um, so what happened there was an aggressing order hit the market. So an aggressing buy, a large aggressing buy. Um, was matched with the resting liquidity that your lead market makers would have just above this high right here. Okay, This high comes in at 066 spot 50, 066 halves. The high on our little candle there was 066 halves. So as the aggressing order came into the marketplace, the CME's matching algorithms are going to match that, match that aggressing order with resting liquidity from your lead market makers. At that point, the lead market makers are holding on to some uh, short inventory and they're going to close that out. 
So your liquidity providers are going to close out their short inventory um, very quickly. Especially, in my opinion, if, if the lead market maker's algorithms, um, if their s models or systems inform them that the market should be going higher, I believe that if they are matched with some with an aggressing order and they're holding on to offside inventory, I believe that they're going to close that out very quickly. Okay, so always like to use our 50%. 50% of this bodied candle comes in at 061 spot 75. Let's see if we get a reaction off 061 spot 75, factoring the spread. 061 spot 50. Low comes in now at 060 spot 75. That's a one point spread. Okay, now we're trading just below the spread. And I would have a difficult time imagining that they don't, they want to stop the market there and not come take out liquidity. So I imagine that shortly any amount of selling should be bought up. We're coming into a one minute order block here. First black candle. Looking at a two tick spread. So the high of our black candle here was at 059.50 low of this candle 059.25 that is within the spread ten minute chart that would you know generally be a yeah this should this should continue to move higher We were buy side inefficient up until 15,086. Five minute chart. Mm. There was a little buy side inefficiency there that we reacted off of. We are now rebalancing this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. I'm particularly seeing the sell side case here without taking out liquidity. But um, then again, if we get stopped out at this point, I'm happy with it. Coming down to a little uh, volume imbalance here. Let's check out our order block black candle here from low from high to low 25% of that watching for these candle closes so that see a quarter of that is 0825 I know it's difficult to see 0825 current low comes in at 057.75 that is within the spread And we're looking at Tokyo open in two minutes. So my draw is correct, but uh, it is possible that we are going to get stopped out here. Would not want to see that, obviously. Like to make money. Two minutes to the Tokyo open. It's also Sydney, Australia open. Close there was good. Close was at 058 spot 25. That is right at the 25% retracement of our one minute order block here. So that was a good close. That was a very good close for higher prices. A lot of equal highs up here now, letting that liquidity build up in the book.
Current low comes in at 058 spot 25. Sitting at the 25% of this order block. Trading lower. Want to see what the close of this candle will be. We're coming up on Tokyo Open. It's going to be next candle. Sydney, Australia and Tokyo, Japan open on the next minute candle. Again, uh, Tokyo, Japan and Sydney, Australia open their stock exchanges on the next minute candle. Okay, so Tokyo and Sydney, Australia just opened. Seen a little bit of a pickup in volatility. We got a flash, flash black candle, flash the black candle. Now we're flashing green. That was an excellent close, by the way. So open of that candle, 058 spot 50, which is above the 25% of this order block, and that would be an excellent sign for higher. Okay, now we're flashing green. This is going to be the first 15 minutes of Asian session trading. Yeah, so excellent body of this candle here. You can see that the low of the black candle here was within the spread of the 25% of this order block. Or this just I'm just gonna use like this black candle basically. Just this black candle body right there. You can see that we any really any way that you slice it, we were within the spread of that 25% of this black candle here. Now if you just classically use the order block. So the two black candles here, bodies, yeah, still wait well above the 25%. Should drive us into liquidity. At this point, I don't want to see... going to move the stop up. I don't want to see us... Uh, well, really, I'm going to move it just below this low. I don't want to see it make a new low from here. So I'm going to lock in at least about $700 of profit. Lock it in. Right there. Yeah, that's going to lock in um, 11 points or something of profit. 9 points. 8 and 3 quarters points. On 3 contracts. So we took a $300 loss trying to long this thing earlier. But it looks like we are confirmed we're going to make up that loss. I'd like to see us come take out liquidity. If you were wondering, by the way, the difference between internal range and external range liquidity, I will explain it to you now. Using our Fibonacci tool here from this high to this low, This is our dealing range. Any retracements, so for example, this high would be internal liquidity. Above it would be, above and below would be external liquidity. So you've got to find your dealing range that you're working in. Breaking short term highs within that dealing range, uh, within said dealing range, is going to be internal liquidity. And breaking outside of that uh, dealing range into another dealing range, that would be uh, external liquidity. So. I'm only looking at an internal liquidity target here. That's really all I'm aiming for. That's all I'm interested in. And then we'll call it a... Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, just in case. We'll, we'll make that two. Just in case it wants to run all the way through this buy side inefficiencies. And then let that one run.
NASDAQ is only down 48 points now uh, from resettlement. So, I'm going to take two off here at liquidity and then leave on a runner, see if we can run up some more points. This is internal range liquidity as it was within our five minute dealing range. We are buy side inefficient here that price might want to react off of, but all these equal highs, there it should be drawn to that liquidity. Really don't see any reason to invalidate my long at this point. Um, should be plenty of liquidity now up at this uh, 069 quarters. Price should be drawn to said liquidity. The algorithm will want to deliver us into liquidity. It's one half of the equation, the less important half of inefficiency and liquidity. Liquidity is going to be oftentimes your, your targets. So I don't use liquidity, this is my own opinion. I do not use liquidity as an entry mechanism, at least not. that's not in my current model. I only try and enter in on inefficiency. Sometimes I will exit at inefficiency as well. Oftentimes what I use liquidity for would be for a target, to, so for an exit target. Or partials taken. So yeah, for a target, basically. So liquidity as a target. This is where people basically if you're wondering, okay, well what is this guy talking about? He says liquidity. It's where people's stops are. So if you're holding short, your stop is above 069. It stops. Stop orders. Price is going to be drawn to uh, liquidity because that is uh, well that's how the market works. It cannibalizes liquidity. So everyone that's using retail concepts, support and resistance, um, many of your other sort of retail trappings, they're all going to have their stops uh, above 069 evens. If they're trailing it down, that's where the trailing stop is. If you initiated a short from up here, that's where your stop is. Uh, your stop could even be up here at these flat equal highs, way above up at 092 evens. So the market's going to hunt down those stops. Um, so that's what the price does. Uh, in addition to finding liquidity, what price does is it seeks to form a more efficient market. So even if you're not looking at the liquidity target here, you also see that we are buy side inefficient here. So price is often going to want to roll back up through where it has inefficiently delivered price in order to deliver it an efficient price. And that is not coming from Reese saying that. That's not coming from me saying that. Uh, the head of the SEC has said that. The CME group talks about quote unquote fair pricing. It, it's all over the place. The breadcrumbs are there. Uh, they don't, you know, the powers that be are not really hiding it from you that, that they're making an efficient marketplace. Um, and a quote unquote fair marketplace. They're not hiding that from you. Uh, you just don't really know how to interpret that statement on the price data yet, which is why you should watch my channel. Okay, so with day trading, at all times, you got to take profits, you got to micromanage your trades, um, you have to watch things carefully develop because although I am drawn to this liquidity up here, it's not it's not like written in stone. It's not gospel truth that it is going to get here. So my sell stop here is going to protect me, take me out of the marketplace with a decent profit here in case my target here is not hit. I believe that it will be hit, but this is not written in stone. This is not gospel truth. This is not Moses on high coming down. Uh, it's just probabilities, and it's a very high probability that the market will want to come up and push through this liquidity. I would give it right now about a 87% chance. So pushing for a few more points here, four more points. $20 a point, that's $80. Three contracts, $240, just the distance between from here to the eye. It's better than most people make in a day. Four points on the NASDAQ, three contracts. $240. It's a lot of people's daily wages right there. 
and I would put that at this point looking at these market conditions I would put it going from point A to point B at about 83 and a half percent and it's growing that number is growing I'm going to put it, making it to my target now, at 90 spot 3%. And the stop is going to come up in case it is a 10% that the market doesn't want this liquidity. Say 90% it wants this liquidity, 10% it does not. this point I've made profit either way so this is how you micro a trade getting a good entry model reasonable targets trailing the stop up didn't need bookmap to see the liquidity, did I? No. No, sir, I did not. It's a redundant tool. Your volume profile is a redundant tool. Redundant, superfluous, extraneous. Shows you the same information the price information does, but with a lot of extra gizmos and bullshit. A lot of bubbles on the chart that are very distracting. I'm going to remove this Fibonacci. In case you haven't realized it yet, my Fibonacci tool is not actually Fibonacci. It's just showing you quarters. 25%, 70, 50%, and 75% retracements. So it's not really a Fibonacci. Okay, let's see if we want to break this little one minute low. I'm going to be stopped out. We're going to call it a trade. I'll end the video with that. The trade will stop up to about an $800 profit. It would be very surprising to me. The price does not want to come in and take out this liquidity, take out these stops would be very surprising to me but nothing is impossible under the sun so this is why we uh, put put the stops up we're now coming up to 15 minutes on the Tokyo Open it does look like I am going to be stopped out and that is okay I'm going to take 800. 800 is good for me. Uh, we did not make it to the liquidity target. We're probably going to end up making it there anyways. Uh, I took 800. Um, and that puts me at an overall profit for the trade sequence that you just followed there at about 500. So this has been an example of live trading the NASDAQ from resettlement into the Tokyo Open. I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.